Hello. We got George over here. Hi, George. You're not the deer, though. Huh? Do what? I was saying you're not the deer, she's the deer. I, I hope so. I don't know if you're going to be deer. I'm going to be rigged on my way. Um, on the second motor, that's still on there, like on the back side, yeah, you can take out like a hand. Probably the other one is the other one. I got on the other one. This would be new to me. There's stuff you get to see when you do it this way that you don't normally get to see. Right, that's what I'm assuming. That makes sense. And Yeah. Because water, air, gas, and air, get oil, like they all go all over this motor. There's little passages, recirculation lines. Yeah. And like when they try to like make a difference between like a horsepower range, sometimes they use the same size motor and they just change the way the air gets pushed through maybe it's part of the motor that's up here or they may do it differently on the computer when it says just you know spray more gas in a throttle position so you know how nick has a 200 show mm -hmm. is your steering lock on yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any play in it or you air you think in your lines um Perhaps. Take a, those off. We might be able to get it. If, you got, if it does have a little bit of play, we can do it. Might be able to get it without bleeding it. What's the highest horsepower um, and motor can you get? Uh, how much are the sevens? What are they like? 750 horsepower or something like that? Oh, 757 or sub. It's a weird number. It's not like straight up 750 yeah. or something. But yeah. Um, a little bit. Now this is actually, you check, this is where you're looking and you're seeing, you know, if there was like a big air bubble in it, when I pulled it, I'd sling like two or three inches at each way. Yeah. And then you'd also like, or if you're steering and like, you, you know, normally would turn it a quarter of a turn. Now you're turning, you know, like half a turn to make the boat maneuver the same way. Uh, This is pretty interesting too because you hold it goes nowhere and then you click your wrist to make it go the direction you want it. Isn't that neat? That's cool. That's the only reason I bought it. Because there's no way it would have any balls if it wasn't if it had brushes in it. it. Still doesn't have that much torque, but that one's to pull the motor off. No, no, but it's a very specific one. It's putting them where putting them but back that becomes the issue. You want to have 10 or less extra pieces, preferably none of which go inside the motor. <laughs> Does that lock at the bottom? 
Yeah, yeah the top count. That's about all. It's only twenty inch yet, you know, not like a big twenty four inch yet. What I like to do is like when I'm done servicing the motor, so I tear apart. I take like air compressor, put like on a lower pressure, and just like spray everything down to get any gunk and stuff that's wedged up under there, spray some anti clothes and some things. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get a little extra love. No matter how you play it out, if you drain the Yamaha oil from anywhere other than sucking, that can make it out. Gasket under there too to be it's called for to be changed. Oh, it's 300 out there. Well, I mean, technically, well, you know, you can argue that if you don't change the oil from there, then you don't really, it's a metal washer. Okay. You can argue. I mean, I guess it could be compromised as well. What's missing out of this ever? My boat. No cam, no timing, no lifters, no valves. Just the crankshaft and pistons. Mm -hmm. yeah. It goes bang, it spins around. Yeah. Residual. You can also use um, diesel because it's a very high oil content. Mm -hmm. So you put a diesel in there yeah, and like, if you're diesel too, like if it was real bad, you put you put put the bottom plug in. Put yep. a couple ounces of diesel in and then, you know, try to shake it around a little bit and then drain it out, spray some of this through, and then throw some gear a little bit. I'm going to let this drain out. I'm going to run inside for like two minutes, and then cool. we're going to take the gear case off. I realize we got slapped because the gear case puts a couple of meat back in it. We'll pressure test the gear case once we have it up on the bench. See if we got leak or anything like that anywhere on it. That was good. Uh, and if we do identify it, you know where it is. Oh my god. Why do people do this? I'm not sure that's it. I got the truck. Nice, you see. Here we go. Just want to be delicate at first because if you go grab some giant spinning impact break it free kind of thing, you're just going to do nothing but destroy everything here. I'm hoping to catch a little bit of the. It's going too big. Boy, as long as it comes out, it's not big. Not Smallest make. mess as possible. Because if I make a mess, I gotta clean it up. So we're gonna try to make the least amount of mess as possible. It's gonna happen either way. You know, inside in the parts room, like right when you turn that corner on that shelf, mm -hmm. inside is actually where I have all the stuff we need for your motor to service it. Okay. You know I mean, it's, it's going to be blatantly obvious because it's like an impeller and filters and stuff like that, the gaskets. Some dark oil. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's been burnt. Yep. Yep. The, either the office door or the back door, the two that are open. How do you know? Once it slows down a little bit, I'm going to take the hose out and just kind of let it dribble. 
but at the first part there's just so much pressure you know because the the oil tank is actually it comes all the way to like up here and so there's a lot of pressure so as soon as you take that bolt out it's like if you change the oil in your car it's just poof at first but now it's going to dribble slow enough to where it may run down some stuff but it's not going to be a lot to where it'll take me all day you know and that's going to be insane. a big deal if you spill water and oil together and wash it in the river you can go to jail for it so you have to make sure you're very careful to not spill anything and if you do use the proper stuff to clean it up Yeah, the goal is when you get it on the ground, you try to uh, put some like cat litter or something like that on it because then it sucks up the uh, oil and then you just then you bring it to a place that takes to use the oil and they recycle it. We got wood laid all over the place because you never know when uh, a boat's going to come in and you need a piece of wood to chuck it behind the trailer so you can take it off your car or something. So that's why it's all over the place. Is this all rice right here? Oh, what, buddy? That's a kind of dirt that soaks up all the oil. That's what I was telling you about where if you spill the oil on the ground, you got to make sure you get it. That's the stuff we need to get. to see how much more damage we can do to your cop shack. Okay. <laughs> This is done in the service. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a line item, full crop, grease crop. Sure. Yep. And you just made me feel stupid. It's, you know how hard I work on those things trying to get those things? Because you've never seen someone do that before. I have never. Nor have you read in the service mail if you see you can do something like this. That's tuition that you got to pay. You got to learn the hard way. used a big ass screwdriver. You got to learn the see. hard way first. You can see where I used a big screwdriver trying to leverage it. Yep, you gotta learn the hard way first, and then after that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then you learn the easy way. So you take forever on that, and he did like what? We're just putting a stack of pieces right there. That's why he gets paid to do it, and I don't. That's <laughs> well, that's why I pay other people to do it for me. Oh, With two and four stroke in like 2019 or 20 yeah. whatever year, especially. Well, then I take out. You know, torque, torque, all that. We're talking just break-in style stuff. Yeah. The reason there's a 20 and 100 hour service interval and there's a break-in period and a four stroke is because after it's machined, since you're using the same oil over and over again, any filings or anything like that that was left over from machining of, of the, the vessel, like the motor itself, well, you're getting out. So that's why 20 hours of changing gear lube and you're changing oil. Yeah. Because those are parts that are constantly moving around and that there might be some residual shavings from, and there's so much more in this block that you want to get it out before it causes any damage. Because all that means is how many times the piston goes up and down before it spins something. In a four-stroke, the piston goes up and down four times, and then it spins something. In a two-stroke, the piston goes up and down two times, and then it spins something. People often think it has to do with the fact that the oil is used different, but it has to do with the stroke of the piston, hence two or four strokes. Then why is there different oil strokes? Because the oil is used different, so that's... And 
The new two strokes, there's not much difference because we don't burn the oil in the motor when we're running it. In an older two stroke, you burn gas and oil together and it would go all over your motor, right? And mix all over the place to lubricate and to make the motor work. In new two strokes, it's like a four stroke. Gas goes bang and oil lubricates on the back side. That's that's that being the that's where the direct jet comes from. So HDPIs, mm -hmm. um, the older Pro X X Pro X S is for Merc, the two stroke versions of it. Yeah. And uh, the E Tex, the precursors were thick and uh, Optimax. Yeah. OMC actually patented both of them, sold Mercury the Optimax kept thick. The, the way if you pick up water and run it through the block also changed the dynamic of performance too. Good. See on that, see there? Yeah. There's two oil tanks on the side of that one. You see? So the smaller of the two, that's a gear lube reservoir. And the other side, that's the engine oil. Okay. God knows that these things strip out real easy too. It will also cut, catch small rain ones. Okay. Do These things are real good at breaking normally. Yeah, I've got your problem. So hand impact, put screw in, screwdriver in, turn direction you want to go. Whack. Now watch this. Look how easy this becomes. One little tap whack. I tried to change that twice a year. You're real low. Like right about here. But now when you put it in, yeah. So you get water in the tube. Do you what you should be doing is after you you're pumping it, I'll show you what you do it. Yeah. It comes out a little bit, you let it sit mm -hmm. for a minute or two, and then you do that two or three times when you're doing it just to make sure you get it good. Yeah. It's a long tail. Don't pull it up because it's gonna take them a while to grow it back. going to be thick like that if you've got some time on it anyway or if it's some water in it you know what I mean I've taken out a lot worse than that Probably, so. you know what I'm saying you're a little bit better off He's moving what's that CRC spray is six and one lubricant I've been using that just so you know because it's so thick yeah, they'll mix it and loosen it up and make sure we wash out all the Thank 
Steering locks. What's that? Oh, uh, those for steering locks. Yeah, I remember you showed them to me. Cause, and that's why I tried because then, because Chucky wanted something for that yeah. and the steering locks. I'm like, dude, I got a guy like that's got, like, I may or may not be able to get him, but I know he can get them. Like, you need to hit him up because he's got these. I know he's got them because he showed them to me. These are 100 bucks a pair. It's worth it. And it's not like those teenage marine ones are going to fucking wear out. Well, especially if you're driving, like, if I'm driving from, like, here to the wildlife range, well, I'm driving from here. South Carolina here, Virginia. Want, like anything I can do to ensure like the safety of the gear is something I should be doing. Yeah. Like why would you not? Right. Because how much money is it gonna cost you if that does that spins loose and throws on the rock? Like, exactly. Know? Sometime this year, um I'm gonna get you to put a new jack plate on here too. Your what? Jack plate. Right. Fucking hate this TH Marine one. It's a passion. A lot of people buy those, but I've seen the Atlas seem to be like the, the, the most sturdy. I've never messed with like the Phantom or whatever the hell that other one is. Um, Atlas, look, so here's the problem I have with it, right? Because I have to have an 8 inch setback just for this brand of boat, right? Atlas doesn't make an 8 inch fucking setback. So I have to use a 4 inch spacer with four inch fucking jack plate, right? These extra bolts get loose all the time. And the way Basscat does it, we have six bolts going into the transom. So now I have 16 bolts I gotta check every other month. And these are so common. I tighten right all the time this comes out. So here's something that uh, is crazy. I had all of the mounting. The mounts here and the mounts up here, mm -hmm. all broke. You tell me. Like the only thing, if there had to have been like a hairline crack or something, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They had to have been a def defective, and then like, you know, you put some torque on it, as soon as it cracks, you know what I'm saying? Aluminum yeah. or that type of metal is gonna like just yeah. break once it's come from, you know what I'm saying? But like, there, there's no like, like there had to have been serious pressure or it was compromised from the get-go and something just and y'all know how to replace it, no questions asked. So, huh. I'm sure, yeah. Like when it came to uh, doing that warranty piece. So, how did this go? I can't say I run fast as fucking some chop. I mean, that, yeah, no, but, that, that but that's like saying if I put two of these back on, an off, on the back of an offshore boat. But is that supposed to happen? No. Chop rough conditions in a row. Because you can't mark it, you have a reliable motor and they say, but only in flat, stable conditions. So. We'll say, with the lower unit looking like that, is that shit coming out of it? I'm still running high 70s in this boat. Wait. Yeah, I did. I did lower unit again. Really, the biggest thing is it, with the fact that no damage, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not really, you know, metal hunks. What's that? There wasn't like metal hunks and stuff, you know what I mean? In yeah. There. So, the fact that you could run 70 and nothing was tore up is pretty significant. All right, so what I need you to do is kind of, you're like, you're kind of like here and just hold up on it. You'll start feeling it start to come down. I'm going to be on this side. I'm going to take these bolts off. I, mean, I just don't want it to go from in your boat to on the ground. Yeah, that would be bad. Uh, I, I, the guys at Highline probably don't want to buy a $5,000 for you. Me, all you need to do is crack this. The great thing is when you crack that, you spray the other piece. 
fixed. The problem is when you don't have the other piece. What's that? Did you see something? Up? No. That corrosion or just breathe? Breathe. That's a medium style. Okay, we just pulled the lower unit because the last time I was on Okeechobee, I bent the prop shaft and I've been running on it for a long time. Uh, not recommended to run on a bent prop shaft, but there wasn't any vibration and I don't have any shavings in a lower unit. So, I mean, that's, that's the good stuff. This is what came out of the lower unit. Obviously it had some water in there. So that's what it looks like. So it's pretty bad. Um, it was at the point where I don't like running on it. <laughs> obviously so now we're gonna do pressure tests we're also changing out they're doing the whole 300 hour service on this thing so we're gonna do a pressure test see uh if and where the leaks are and uh we're about to pull the gauge out before do what we're bringing the gauge over now to do that all right
right, can you pick the gear case up? Just like slide it off in that corner. I just want to make sure this. Just pick it up. Right there. Mm -hmm. So you can see that I spent some time there yesterday. That one, those control cables were oh, not. Yeah. I moving. got them out, but dude, I they were like stuck, stuck. Uh -huh. I was in there for like two or three hours yesterday trying to get. Them out. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I got them. Oh shoot, Yamaha. Right. No, I need to adapter. You leaving them Yamaha battery cables or to hook up to the perk or you mean? Yeah, for now I. Yeah, did. yeah, just leave them. Figured that'd be easier. Because otherwise I'm going to confuse the shit out of myself when mm -hmm. it comes time to put it back in. They look fine. I'll just leave them in there. making everything move with it so you're not necessarily proving that it holds pressure to a full cycle of operation. I didn't hold pressure to it. Yeah, I mean, no point doing all that now. We're going to lose there. <laughs> so the fact that my lower unit hasn't exploded at almost 80 miles an hour. I think we're going to be able to coverage. Because that's only because I, my case is going to be that that seal is, is not what there's nothing wrapped around that seal. No, you know what I mean? They're fine. going to say, send me pictures. I'm going to send them pictures of a perfectly fine seal. Right. My concern is, is the gear case out of the line? Because if we don't know that, then we pull them. Because then they're going to ask that. Yeah. Because you can't, you know, is the gear case still in line? If yes, they send parts to repair. If no, then they're going to send a new gear case. And that seal hasn't been changed since. It should, the ever. only time it should ever change is if it doesn't, you know what I mean? If it does that. That's not a service item. Yeah, that seal's never changed. What's that? I said that, that seal's... I can't remember. What? So could that just be a warping? You're not hitting anything? I don't know. Um, you're good. I kind of didn't expect it to. Well, I was kind of hoping that that was going to hold pressure and everything would have been good for now. And then that way I could have just gotten all the parts in. And... Well, I guess it's already taken parts in. Yep. I mean, yep. You want to take your boat with you? I can take the boat. I, mean, I'll, yeah, I'm I have gonna, no problem leaving the unit. Yeah, I'm gonna, only because I don't want your boat to get taken into another boat. Yep. And although I've got a lot of room right now, I don't necessarily have a ton of people working for me. Cross Industries, your boat and truck accessory superstore. If we don't have it, you don't need it.